love you to the most. Hi. Hi, siblings. Shalom. Children of the most high. Shalom. People of the living Elohim. Okay? Hallelujah. So we're going to get into this word today. Per usual. Politics. Per usual. So I was thinking, pondering, actually. For real, for real. Just reflecting on things per usual. And allowing y'all to direct my thoughts. You know what I mean? So I don't spiral um, into my own wisdom spiral into my own well thank you i was spiral into my own lack of wisdom spiral into my own lack of understanding and allow my emotions and the reality of situations circumstances and experiences to dictate how i feel worship and respond to others right it's very important that we understand that um and even with this and i do reality like this and i won't even get into that because a lot of people not ready. Um, but just because I can see it with my eyes what does not necessarily mean that that's what it is. Which is why Yah tells us, do not lean into your own understanding. Which is why Yah tells us through prayer and supplication. Which is why Yah tells us to keep our thoughts on higher. Which is why Yah tells us, I am your teacher and I will guide you with my eye. Right? We got to understand when it comes to reality. Okay, Abba. When it comes to reality, right, and I know a lot of people are already getting nervous because, you know what I mean, you still, you, you, you still, you're not tapped in. But um, when it comes to reality, and, and let's just take it to the garden, right? What Chava did, or who the world calls Eve, right, is made herself privy to reality the knowledge of good and evil our abba had set it up so perfectly that we didn't even have to be bothered with the illusions of reality right when it's prince of the air what is the air what does it mean to be in the atmosphere what get in your word and let y'all teach you but what i'm saying is focus we have to be focused on y'all y'all made it so that we can have direct communication with him so that we didn't even have to be bothered by quote unquote reality right now that we are in this place where reality is an option right and when i'm talking about reality i'm talking about uh this augmentation of what is and what isn't yah is and only is and so when you're following yah and allowing yah to lead you right there are certain perspectives and understandings that you will naturally have because they have naturally been given to you because you are a naturally created being by the most high y'all. And I'm going to leave it at that. I ask y'all to help you understand it. All right. And so as within that, I was just thinking and reflecting on the experiences and and asking for real, for real, asking our Abba to help me navigate that. Like Yah has really been teaching me how to self-navigate I mean, yeah, well, self-navigate, that wasn't what I was going to say, but thank you, Abba, for taking my mouth. Self-navigate, for real, and also self-regulate in him, right? Not just out here according to what I think or what I hope or what feels good. No, according to my Abba, his word, his will, his way. And in that, I've been able to take a step back and assess my emotions, right? Dealing with emotional intelligence, assess my emotions and make decisions based on what is true, not necessarily um, what's right, what's wrong, what feels good, what should be done, what could be done, what would be justified in saying, what would be justified in doing. Nah, but according to truth, what did my Abba say? Right? And I, again, I always have to reiterate that because sometimes people assume that, you know what I mean, you got to be a sucker to be moving according to the will of y'all people of y'all we have nothing to prove to other people about our relationship with the most high me telling you like it is me being uh direct me being clear me calling out um selfishness me calling out lawlessness uh me calling out um a a lack of what i will a lack of accountability, okay? A lack of responsibility, a lack of certainty, a lack of discipline in this word. Me 
calling those things out and you feeling a way about it, does that mean that I'm not walking with Yah? Me not doing those things doesn't mean that I am walking with the most high. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes we feel like being quiet and, and I don't know, I talked about this before, but it needs to be reiterated. Being quiet and just being passive and saying, well, I know y'all's going to handle it. Y'all sent you to handle it. Y'all sent you to speak up. Y'all sent you to, to shake it up. Y'all sent you to cause a problem. Y'all sent you. He sent you. He sent you to do it. He sent you to break it up. He sent you to put it in shambles. He sent you. Stop thinking because you sitting back and not saying nothing that you're doing what y'all told you to do. That's not always the case. Ask your Abba what you're supposed to be doing. Okay. And so in that, learning how to do that according to the will of our Abba and when not to do that according to the will of our Abba and just speaking to him and I and I, I did I got in my feelings I was I even had the audacity of being in my feelings on Shabbat and our Abba had to talk to me about that and he gave me clarity and he gave me wisdom and he gave me understanding and I repented and rejoiced because of the one who has chosen me because he only corrects those he loves if you can walk and stand and don't feel no type of way about walking against about walking in lawlessness Call it off. You might as well go ahead and call that thing, baby. Because he only corrects those who he loves. All right. And so in that, I was just like, Abba. Like, I understood. I was like, yo, see, it's wild. Because Job's friends, right, just knew. And it's wild because even Job had to tell him, he was like, you know the most high because of me. Because y'all used me to come and teach y'all. So how you going to come in here and try to tell me that I'm not moving according to what y'all is telling me to do? I'm telling you, I'm experiencing these things of not of my own behalf. Not because I'm not moving how I'm not experiencing what I'm experiencing due to disobedience. And the fact that you don't have the eyes to see it and the ears to hear that know that lets me know that you are not moving according to what Yah has used me to tell you. You still off somewhere, right? And I know people be like, oh, you knew the most high because of him. That sounds like pride and ego. No, it sounds like truth. Because sometimes people be so big headed that when y'all comes to them directly, they dismiss it. So y'all be like, can you go get your, can you, can you handle my lightweight for me? Because if I keep having to go use my voice, use my hand, it's going to be a problem. So can you go? So yeah, sometimes y'all will send. And actually the only time y'all sends is when you not listen. Read the scripture. What can you can somebody point out to me? Because I could be wrong. I have been wrong before. Bless y'all. I am not in a place where I cannot be uh shown things or I can't give, be given new revelation as y'all develops and grows. But who in scripture had to be spoken to that was listening to the most high? That was listening to the most high directly. Anytime someone had to come and speak up, anytime a prophet had to come, anytime word had to come from a source that was not directly Yah. And by directly I mean Yah speaking directly to that person himself was when disobedience was it was what? Abraham was speaking directly to the Most High. Noah was speaking directly to the Most High. Moses speaking directly to the Most High. No people said, we wouldn't even want to talk to y'all. We would just want you to go talk to them and deliver the message for us. David was speaking directly to the Most High. Then, then Nathan, had to, Nathan had to come. Why? Disobedience. Once there is a separation, then there has to be someone to intervene. There has to be a mediator. Bless the for Yahushua HaMashiach. And I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all. Because I think I'm gonna, uh, I'll start ranting. And I don't want to do that. But understand, that, like, understand, right? Like, Job's friends could not understand what it was that Job was saying and or doing because Job was on level 43 and they still trying to figure out at the, at the, which, okay, do, which number do we push to open the door to the elevator? Job is on level on floor four, on the 43rd floor and 
his peoples are at the at the ground level trying to figure out which button to push to open the elevator door but yet they wanted to tell job what it is that he needed to be doing tell job how he was supposed to be moving calling out job for his unrighteousness you're not even in the building how are you going to talk to job about what yah is saying to him you don't even know how to find yah for yourself which led me to this i got my handy dandy notebook okay um siblings and this is for us okay there is a very genie like perspective reflective of that get your blessing preaching it's yours teaching okay okay for real and and for many of us, there has been a name change, right? We don't say God, we say Yah. We don't say Jesus, we say Hamashiach, right? But there's that same Pentecostal Baptist Church of God in Christ mindset, okay? That God is just out there somewhere and, and his responsibility or his sole purpose is easing my pain and making sure my car gets fixed. That's what I have written down. That's what our Abba talked to me about this morning. And maybe your God is out there somewhere. And that's his concern. Okay. But the Most High Yah is, is, is deeper than that. It's beyond that. If that's where you are now. You. Baby. It got to be way more fast. And it has to be way more praying. It has to be way more surrendered. And it has to be less YouTube. And it has to be less. um, uh, Whoever you watching on. Less apps. Let's, whoever you, like, it, you gotta, there has to be a separation in order for you to righteously and rightfully hear Yah. This is why many are called, but only few, right? Because you don't want to do this. We do not want to do this. It's all here. It's here about how much we did not want to listen. And because we did not listen, take it back. Thank you, Abba. We only want to listen to that which feels good to us, which feels right. Which which lines up with how we were taught, what we've been thinking anyway. Like what lines up with our own natural ability. Because when you start getting to the super supernatural or the unnatural, that, that can't be, y'all. That's not, that's not of God. That's of you. That's your thinking. Just because you don't believe or don't understand. Just because you can't comprehend don't mean it's not truth. Y'all just can't take you there yet because you still stuck on the pain in your life and getting your car fixed. Because that's a miracle for you. Because that's what matters to you that's your focus that has been your focus in life just i just want to be comfortable do i want comforts absolutely for myself for my child for people i know people i don't know even for people i can't even stand i want comfort and peace for people i do not like so miss me with all of that you don't you you're trying to act like you're a ho no i'm not saying that i'm holier than anybody but my abba is than everybody and so if he's the standard and my thoughts are to reflect his thoughts i can't be sitting down here with you moaning and groaning and crying and murmuring i have to there's a certain posture i have to have as a woman of the most high there's a certain posture a certain demeanor a certain mindset a certain way of speaking a certain way of being that i have to have it's a requirement regardless of my car regardless of my bills regardless of i don't know how my my daughter is acting if she's doing what she's supposed to do i still gotta do you understand what i'm saying with those things, how can I say it, Abu? Does tra am I aware of tragedy? Absolutely. 
Am I aware of catastrophe and devastation? Absolutely. Am I aware of sadness, desperation? Absolutely. Am I at liberty to allow those things to dictate my demeanor, my worship, my praise? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And there are only a few of us who are dedicated and determined at that level. And I'm not saying that if you don't move like that, then you your relationship with the Most High is in shambles. I'm not. Again, I'm that. That's out of my jurisdiction. Because as a woman of Yah, I cannot speak like that. I can't speak those things. I cannot tell you your relationship with Yah is trash because you're not moving like how I'm moving. I can't tell you that because that would go against my responsibility. That would go against that in which I have been allowed to do. Okay, so let's get into this word, right? Like I said, there's a very genie-like perspective, reflective of the, get your blessing preaching. It's yours teaching. So bless y'all. Let's see what the text says, okay? I don't know if this video is going to be titled, What Makes You So Different? I think it is. I think it's going to be What Makes You So Different, you know? Being mocked for trusting the Most High. Because it's, that's what it is. It's being mocked for trusting the Most High. There are those of us who refuse to be mocked for trusting the Most High, right? So we do things that keep us from being mocked, that keep us from standing out, that keep us from looking different. And there are those of us that do the mocking, that stand and point. And make, thank you, Abba, Job or his friends. Which are you? Who are you? Are you Job? Right? Enduring because Yah has called you as righteous. Like, look, dude, what did it say? Don't you see my servant Job? He's righteous. He don't He don't err. He knows me. He loves me. Y'all went on. Go. Go test him. Go inflict him. Do everything to him but kill him. Took his friends. Took his wife. Killed all his children. Burned all his land. Took his body and did all. What? So how can you, with your righteous mind, how can you, with your righteous soul, with all your intelligence and knowledge of this word, say that, because someone else is enduring that they're unrighteous. They don't hear y'all. They're not moving how they're supposed to be moving. They don't know what they're doing. But are you, Job, willing to endure till the end? Whether it's a, uh, a self-willingness or regardless, I don't have no other choice willingness. Do you have that willingness to endure to the end? Because you trust Yah and you know that he knows what's best. However it unfolds, regardless of if you get children back, you get another wife, if you get another some more land or riches, are you going to stand with Yah regardless of that? Or are you like his friends? A relationship with Yah is contingent on what it feels like, what it looks like, what it sounds like to you based on your wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Let's see what the text said. Bless Yah. I'm gonna keep it short as I as I hope to do. You know what I mean? But I feel like it's really important that we talk about what a blessing is that we discuss amongst ourselves. Um what y'all does according to according to the script, according to the word. Right? Because sometimes we'll get in our own mind and start assuming, and that's what y'all tells us not to do. We'll start assuming that we know. It's like, you don't know. I don't know. It's the wisdom that Yah bestows upon me. Do you know what the word bestows mean? That means he puts it of his own free will, of his own free doing. And it's not contingent on my intelligence. There are requirements attached to it. Definitely believe that. There are requirements attached to it. This isn't just me waking up and saying, oh my gosh. I'm not saying that y'all couldn't do that because he does. That wasn't for me though. 
I have to study. I have to get in his word. I have to sacrifice. I have to stand up strong. I have to endure in order to get to the levels in which Yah has placed me in, in order to have the understanding in which Yah has given me, in order to have the wisdom in which Yah is allowing me to develop and move from. You may not have to do all of that, and that's fine. Bless y'all for that. But for those of us that do, for those of us that have the requirement of being intentional in this word, be intentional in the word. Focus on the word. Prioritize the word. And actually do it. Like, you can know all of this, but if you're not doing what it says, do. What? What are we talking about? What are we discussing? All right. Let's get to the text and see what, you know what I mean? Genesis 12, 1, because sometimes we feel like if it isn't looking right, if it isn't sounding like blessing, if it isn't looking like blessing, according to our understanding of what blessing is, according to what we've been taught that blessing is and it isn't. Yahuwah said to Abram, this is Genesis 12, go for yourself from your land, from your relatives and from your father's house to the land that I will show you. Walk away from everything you know and I'm going to guide you along the way. And I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and him who curses you, I will curse. And all the families of the earth shall bless themselves by you. So Abram went as Yahuwah had spoken to him and lot with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. Yo, Abram was 75 years old. Yah told him everything that you know, everything that you think you know, forget it. Even if you have never done, and a lot of us haven't, which is why we look at other people who, who have done it and are doing it as if they're crazy. If you haven't, let me tell you about, if your soul hasn't been, and I know I've said this before, and I was talking to a friend of mine not too long ago, and these were my exact words, bless y'all. I say, if your soul, if y'all hasn't taken your soul from you, detached it, taken it away, Right? Because he has the ability to do what? Separate the bone from the marrow and the spirit from the man. So Yah takes your Ruach from you. Right? The Ruach that you have. Works on it. Does surgery. Develops it. Puts it back. And then you go to soul therapy. Physical therapy for your Ruach. Some of y'all, have y'all ever seen people who are in severe surgeries i mean surgeries that they even surprised that that person made it out alive and then they have to go to physical therapy grueling ripping pain every single day just to learn how to walk all over again just to learn how to pick up a fork and dip it in some spaghetti and put it to their mouth To be able to just raise their hand. If y'all hasn't done that to you, don't look at somebody who y'all has done that to or is doing that to and start making suggestions and play. Well, it should be. You have no idea. You have no idea the work of enduring. You have no idea the work of enduring at Yah's hand. Enduring at Yah's hand is totally different from enduring at man's hand. Totally different. So that's what he was doing to Abraham at 75 years old. Ripping everything from him. And replacing it with what needs to be there. And then taking him through the healing process. It wasn't just a band-aid, no neosporin. Now, this was a real healing process. His mind had to be healed. Which is why we talk about when we see what happens with Sarah. And I begin at 24 minutes. Dang. 
when we talked about when he did what he did with Sarah and even when Sarah pushed her, you know what I mean, concubine and Ishmael, like we could see that there was still like some development that had to had that had to take place. Walking with our Abba is challenging enough as it is. Why do we as a people make it harder on each other when we can see righteousness in you? I see you doing righteousness according to the word because I'm in it. Real recognize real. I see Yah's grace, his hand, his mercy, his power, his authority. Why would I take it upon myself to make it harder for you? Nonetheless, Yah takes Abram. He goes through all of these things. At 75 years old, he leaves. He take his wife. He take his nephew, right? Which, which comes with its own troubles of itself, right? We don't know how old Lot was, but at some point he got old enough to do his own thing. So he had been with Abram so long, Abram had raised him. And you got Sarah who helping you raise Lot, but she don't have any children of her own. And she and Lot, and if you look at the history, eh, they kind of related. <laughs> and they look in, you know what I mean? It's like, there's a lot going on. You got to read this text with the intention of understanding, not just reading the words. There's a lot going on in Abram's life. And he's 75 years old. So there has been a lot going on in Abraham's life. And now y'all's like, all right, bet. Now we're going to do it. Leave everything. Drop everything. Forget everything. I'm about to rip you to shreds real quick. But don't worry about it because I'm going to put you back together. And when I put you back together, you're going to be right. I'm going to rip you up, put you back. And then all of that's going to heal. All of the cuts, all of the severs, okay, going to heal. Then there was a famine in the land. Verse 10, and Abram descended to Egypt to sojourn there for famine was severe in the land. So on top of you learning and unlearning at the same time, simultaneously, and if, if you haven't done that, I can't explain that to you. That has to be an experience that you have to have. Learning and unlearning at the same time is real. So he's learning and unlearning at the same time and he hung, starving to be exact. And now, now not only trying to figure out how I'm going to feed me, but he had a whole flop. Literally and figuratively. Like, because he also had flocks. He had flocks of sheep and cattle, and he also had people. Where else we going? Let's go to 14, Genesis 14, 13. Then there came the fugitive and told Abram the Ivory, who dwelt in the plains of Mary, the Amorite, the brother of Eshcol, and the brother of Anir, these being Abram's allies. And when Abram heard that his kinsman, his nephew, was taken captive, he armed his disciples who had been born in his house, 318, and he pursued them as far as Dan. Because we, we, we feel like if, in order for you to be blessed... You can't, you're not going through nothing. You know what I mean? It can't look like hurt. It can't look like chaos. It can't look like 17 verse 1. When Abram was 99 years old, remember, mind you, he left when he was 75. When Abram was 99 years old, Yahuwah appeared to Abram and said to him, I am El Shaddai, walk before me and be perfect. I will set my covenant between me and you, and I will increase you most exceedingly. Abram threw himself upon his face, and Yah spoke with him, saying, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be a father of a multitude of nations. Your name shall no longer be called Abram, but shall be called Abraham. Shout out to everybody who Yah has called you by your name, and you know it, and you move according to it. Bless Yah for your obedience, your strength, and your endurance. May he continue to cover you with his mercy and his love. And may you be separate from wickedness all the days of your life. And when trials and tribulations come, because though they may, remember that who has overcome the world. And in your remembrance, remember that woe to them in which the judgment comes. All right. 
17 and 1. And then we also have verse 24. Seventeen and one and twenty-four. Verse twenty-four. Abram was ninety-nine years old when he was circumcised on the flesh of his foreskin. Abram was going through it, wasn't he? And y'all call him friend. He said, "This is my friend." Ninety-nine years old, he getting circumcised. Seventy-five years old, he getting ripped to shreds. It's looking like from seventy-five to ninety-nine, he was getting ripped up the whole time. Physically, spiritually, emotionally. Come on, Abba. Come on, Abba. Hallelujah. Because we got to make it clear. We got to make it plain. That's what our Abba does. Makes it clear and plain so understanding is there. Okay? And I'm going to continue this on, but you know I got to cut it right here because it's 30 minutes. So if this is all you listen to, may the most I bless you and keep you and all connected to you and don't be judgy. Don't be judgy. Don't be looking at people and assuming that you know more about what Yah is saying to them than they do. If you can see the fruits. And by the fruits, I'm not talking about if they were driving around in a fancy car. I'm not talking about if their house is big. I'm not talking about if their their hair stay done. and they ne um, That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fruits. You hear how they speak. There has been a consistency in the way that they glorify and worship the Most High. Come on, Abba. There has been a realization of of their walk in the physical how they speak how they act how they dress how they treat other people how they treat themselves if you see that in them don't make it hard for them don't be judgy don't be aggressive when you got a problem with how they are moving go to Yah and ask them how you should be moving Hallelujah. All right, so we're going to get into the next one. And I shall see you in a moment. <laughs> Bless y'all. <laughs>